Hello and welcome to another SprueCam tutorial brought to you by SprueCam America. In this tutorial what we're going to do is show you how to mill a, a large part using the, a fourth axis rotary table in a flat orientation. So the first thing we're going to do is go to our machining tab and we have our Tormach uh, PCNC 1100 machine definition highlighted. Um, on my machine it's just called a little something different but on yours it should be called PCNC 1100. And I'm going to go to my machining tab, go down here and click on the icon that is called machine setup. I'm going to expand the tooling section and expand axis x table selection right here. Then there's a little drop down arrow Let's expand this out so you can see it a little better. And I'm going to pick vertical axis A. When I turn that on, you see the axis table has shown up right in the middle of the machine bed. Okay. Now let's go to our model tab. And I'm going to go to the project tab up ahead up here go to import and I'm going to find my model disk one click OK here it's come in we need to adjust it a little bit so I'm going to click on part down here I'm going to click disk one and I'm going to use transform function to rotate this around the x-axis 90 degrees click apply and then I'm going to locate my zero in the middle of the part click apply and close okay well we have our large disk out here but we need to move it up so that it's not embedded itself into the at rotary table so we can do that back in our machining tab under machine setup we're going to click on workpiece setup, click the three little dot button right here, and move this guy up in Z just enough. Let's see, 1.5. It's about right. Just to get it from, to sit up on top of the rotary axis table. All right, you can see this disc is pretty big. It's 20 inches in diameter, which would be very difficult to mill um, using the standard setup. There is not enough y-axis motion to mill this whole thing the way it sits. So that's why we're going to use the rotary table in this arrangement. Now what I'm going to do is create a workpiece. So I'm going to click on the workpiece icon right here, click on primitive, and I want a cylinder around the z-axis. I'm going to add that in. So now it's not a big square, just a big round chunk. Okay. You can see if we look at it from the top view, what a very big part it is. So the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to pocket out one of these pie pieces. So I'm going to create a new roughing pocketing operation. I'm going to go down here and find my job assignment icon. And I'm going to go around the bottom of the pocket. I double clicked the edge so that all the edges show up and I'm going to click add a pocket. Now I'm going to click the top of the part and click top level. And I'm going to click the bottom of my pocket and click bottom level. All right. Now let's double click the pocketing operation and find a nice 
end mill to do this with. A 25 millimeter center cutting end mill looks pretty good to me. I'm going to keep that as my tool. Feeds and speeds and everything we're not really going to get into. So let's go to parameters. Well, let's go to lead in and lead out. For my plunge, I'm going to zigzag. Make my safe height 50 thousandths above the part. For my maximum length of zigzag, I'm going to make it a half an inch. My minimum length is zero. My digression is going to be 0 0.02. And my angle is going to be 2 degrees. Now let's look at parameters. I'm going to take the relief angle off. I'm going to make sure my deviation number is one thousandths. This is something that you're going to want to check on just about every project that you do. If there's a deviation number, you want it to be one thousandths at least. And my depth of cut, I'm going to make, let's say, a quarter inch for just the just to show us a good simulation. So that's three quarters of an inch deep pocket. My Z retract height will be 0.1. Let's click OK. Let's click Run. All right, now let's just see what this will do. We'll turn the machine back on. Let's make this non-transparent and click play. Now if you notice, the rotary table at this point is not moving. All right, The machine is moving all over and let's look at it from up above. In some places, if we can restart this, it's going to extend our y-axis pretty pretty close to tripping the limit switches on that y-axis so how do we get past that all right let's try this let's double click pocketing in our machining tab and let's go a little further down to transformation in rotary transformation I'm going to turn this to polar And I'm going to make my radial axis X. I'll click OK. Click Run. Now what you're going to see is going to be very close to hitting. So instead of making our radial axis X, let's go back and change that radial axis to Y. Now let's click Run. All right, that'll work a little nicer, give us a little bit more area to deal with. Let's go ahead and check out the simulation now. We'll regenerate that simulation and click play. Now you can see the rotary axis is doing a lot of motion. Let's look at it from above. That's much better. Now, you might say, let's do the rest of these pockets. So that's easy enough to do. Now, I haven't seen exactly what our, what our problem is, why we're not getting a nice green check, but I have a suspicion that it may just be our check for gouges selection here. Nope, that's not it. Just a bit outside of what this model likes for the machine definition is probably max. Oh, yeah, that's exactly what's going on. Is it shows when it shows a a red piece 
of the machine definition. In this case, this is the Y saddle. If that is red, that means it's gone past what it considers to be its limit switches. So, if we go back in there and change our radial axis to X, it no longer shows that Y saddle as our problem. So for now, we'll keep that the way it is. These will obviously have to be, if you were doing this exact project, you would obviously have to <clears throat> pay a little bit more attention to where everything is lining up. But that looks good. So now let's extend it out and do the rest of these pockets. All right, so let's go back to our machining tab, double click pocketing, and multiply toolpath by axis. We're going to turn that to copying. A axis position. Multiple steps. Make that 72 degrees. And make the count 5. Let's see if what we get there exactly what we want to see. Now if we do the simulation and regenerate it, it'll do that first pocket. And then do all the subsequent pockets. That looks really good. Okay, now let's go back to our machining tab and we're going to see there's a nice big chamfer right here on this part. So let's make ourselves a chamfer mill and do the chamfer all the way around the circle. So we're going to create a new finishing 2D contour. We're going to pick the bottom circle in our job assignment. Oh, there's something in there already. Let's clear that out. We got our bottom circle. Let's go ahead and click curve. Now we'll double click 2D contouring, go to tool, and we're going to make a nice big chamfer mill. And we're going to call it an engraver. We'll make the diameter three quarters of an inch. A value 45 degrees, make the D value 0. Actually, may, let's make the D value 50,000. So that's got a little bit of a more of a stubby tip to it. Now we picked that bottom ring, so we're going to pick a height, contact height, that's just about here. So let's go ahead and turn on height. And Oh, let's put 0 0.05, 50 thousandths. That's our contact point. So we're going to make that this part of this tool contact that outside line. We've got our feeds and speeds. Oh, that's going to be corrected. Yeah, that's still good. Parameters. Our Z retract height will make 0.1. Let's click OK. I just want to go back out to the model here. And I'm going to go ahead and click this bottom line and click my top level and my bottom level. Both at that point. All right. You know what? I'm going to clear that out. Let's let's pick our let's pick our outside curve again. And let's just pick this curve right here as our bottom level. Let's not pick it as our top level as well. All right, let's go double click 2D contouring. 
bottom level minus 0.3, top level 0. Let's do this in four shots, make our safe level 0 0.05. We'll turn on helical machining. Oh, one thing we forgot. Let's go back to transformation. Turn the rotary transformation to polar. Keep our radial axis as X. And let's run this. Go to our simulation. And click play. As it goes around, the chamfer mill goes deeper and deeper and deeper until it contacts that outer line and you get a really nice looking chamfer all by just turning the rotary axis and bringing the Z level down. Now if we go back here. go back up to our top here regenerate it and we can get a little bit different look at it from up here around and around deeper and deeper that looks good so this tutorial has shown us how to mill a essentially an oversized plate using the A-axis laying down flat on uh, the PCNC 1100. I hope you enjoyed it.